afternoon everyone. I want to welcome all the distinguished guests present here today and all the attendees in our online model, online platform for the 16th inaugural lecture conducted by Professor Manisha Murasekar from the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering. To introduce our inaugural lecturer, I want to now invite Professor Chan Kategori, head of the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering. Good afternoon, uh, Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Deans of Faculties, my colleagues and dear attendees for this platform. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the speaker to this afternoon, my colleague, Professor Manisha Yasanti Gunasekaran. Professor Manisha Gunasekaran graduated from the University of Moratur as a chemical engineer in 1994. She has completed a Master of Engineering degree in Environmental Engineering and Management from the same university. In 2003, she obtained her doctoral degree from the Department of Chemical Engineering of the University of Hadra in UK. She is a Chartered Engineer, a member of Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka and a Life Member of Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. Professor Gunasekara joined the Department of Chemical Engineering, University of Moratur in 1994 as a temporary instructor. She served the department as an engineering teaching assistant from 1996 to 2004 and thereafter as a senior lecturer. She became a professor on merit in June 2022. She has been responsible for conducting lectures for engineering graduates at the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering and for postgraduates who follow the MSc in Sustainable Process Engineering Study Program. She has supervised undergraduate and postgraduate research projects on her major research areas of inherent environmentally friendly process route selection and accident hazard in the process industry. By now, she has supervised 12 postgraduates, of them two were reading for MPhil degrees. She has published more than 50 research papers in reputed national and international journals and in conferences. Currently, she supervises the postgraduate reading for a PhD degree under the title of Environmental Risk-Based Chemical Process Route Selection. She was an outstanding research personnel awardee at the University of Moratur since 2008. Professor Gunasekara has been served as a visiting lecturer to the Department of Civil Engineering of the University of Moratur, the Department of Chemistry of the University of Ruhuna, and the Department of Microbiology of the University of Kalani. Additionally, she has extended this as a technical expert and as a national consultant to many public institutions. She was a technical advisor from February uh, 2013 to 2019 for the assessment of greenhouse gas validation and verification bodies for Sri Lanka accreditation body for conformity assessment and became as an assessor in the same body in 2022. Also, she was a national consultant to the uh, in initial environmental examination study carried out for the proposed industrial zone in Magampura, Runupura, Mahindra Rajapat support at Hambantota, chemical accident prevention and preparedness for Sri Lanka program project conducted in 2013 to 14, which was implemented by the Central Environmental Authority of Sri Lanka. Implementation of hazardous weight management regulations in Sri Lanka in 2005 and environmental impact assistant project for the installation of autoclaves for sterilization of healthcare based in Colombo for the Ministry of Health, Nutrition and Welfare in 2004. And she has made her contribution as a resource person in several forums, in conferences, seminars and workshops. With the extensive expertise on environmental engineering and management, 
Professor Manisha Gunasek will present you today on the, under the topic Assessing Chemical Process Roots and Inherent Environment, Health and Safety Considerations. Thank you. Over to you, Manisha. Thank you, Professor Gadeke, for a kind introduction. Uh, Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies, Professor Aditya Alvis, Head of the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering, Professor Gadeke, uh, members of the faculty, uh, colleagues. Uh, today, my topic is Assessing Chemical Process Foods and inherent environmental health and safety consideration. So initial, uh, initially, I will, in my lecture, I will give an introduction to chemical process fruits assessment and also to inherent, the concept inherent safety uh, or inherent safety design. And then I will present some methodologies developed uh, to assess chemical process rules and also some future work that I'm planning to carry out. So if we consider the chemical process plant design and development stages, there are, uh, there are several stages involved after getting the idea of the chemical that we are going to manufacture. Uh, the first phase is the research and development phase, where we uh, the concept uh, process concept is uh, developed from the lab scale to the uh, pilot scale. And in the preliminary process design stage, we generate alternate uh, uh, processes uh, and then identify uh, uh, major equipments involved. So in the basic engineering design stage, uh, uh, in the preliminary process design stage, we identify the uh, process alternatives and then uh, uh, develop a basic process flow diagram. Uh, and uh, in basic engineering design stage, uh, identify the major unit operations and estimate the material and uh, energy balance and uh, uh, from the data available process instrumentation diagram and process layout uh, plant layout is also uh, designed and the detailed uh, process uh, process uh, flow sheet uh, is developed and during detailed engineering design stage we uh, do the detailed mechanical design uh, and also civil and uh, electrical designs involved and the fi finalize the, the, the uh, design of the plant layout as well. After that, the procurement and fabrication and construction of the installation and uh, startup and operation. So in, in each of these uh, stages, uh, we uh, various activities are involved and uh, various decisions are also involved in each stage. So in the preliminary process design stage, we uh, generate alternate chemical process routes or paths to produce a certain chemical. So at this stage, we need to select uh, one out of the alternatives to uh, design or proceed further. In the basic engineering design stage, we uh, develop the process flow diagram and identify various uh, uh, major unit operations involved. So uh, the process unit selection decision is involved during basic engineering design stage. Uh, similarly, for various other activities also, uh, during design stage, various decisions are involved. So the chemical process food selection is involved during preliminary process design stage. So if we consider <coughs> what we mean by a chemical process food or a chemical process path, uh, we can consider it as uh, uh, the raw materials and the sequence of reaction steps involved in 
converting the raw material to uh, final useful product. So if we consider an example, acetic acid, a very uh, useful substance. Uh, I have shown here three possible uh, routes to produce uh, acetic acid. One is methanol carbonylation process, butane oxidation process, and acetaldehyde oxidation process. So there are three alternate routes, uh, possible routes uh, shown here. And if you consider methanol carbonylation route, the raw materials involved, the chemicals involved are methanol and carbon monoxide. Similarly, if you consider other routes, butane uh, use uh, need uh, uses uh, butane and oxygen, uh, and acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde and oxygen. So uh, you can see different routes involve different chemicals. And also reaction conditions, uh, different uh, catalysts are used, and the operation conditions involve various temperatures, different temperatures, pressures as well. So, uh, out of these alternate routes, when we select a process route, that uh, the chemicals involved in that route will be the chemicals present in our plant. So the hazards associated with the chemical plant uh, will be the hazards associated with the chemicals involved in the route that we have selected. So if we avoid has, uh, routes which are hazardous, we can uh, avoid such hazards in our plant as well. So this makes our plant inherently safer. Or, uh, inherently environmentally friendly or inherently occupationally healthier. So, uh, so by when we have alternate uh, process routes to select one out of the, uh, the many we have, uh, we need uh, to assess uh, and we have to consider certain criteria. So uh, the most important criteria that we use is economics and also uh, technical criteria. Uh, apart from these important criteria, we need to consider other aspects as well. So safety considerations, uh, health, occupational health impacts, and also environmental impacts. So as I mentioned earlier, the route selected will determine the chemicals present and also the process conditions present in the plant. So the, the hazards uh, present, if we avoid hazardous routes, the hazards uh, in the plant also can be eliminated or avoided uh, and reduced. So this leads to the establishment of inherently safe, inherently healthier, and environmentally friendly chemical process plants. So when we uh, select a certain chemical pro chemical process route to develop uh, our plant, uh, the chemicals are involved in any route, so these ch chemicals will have certain hazards. So these remaining whatever the hazards, uh, we can control them by applying various protective measures. So the inherently safer design uh, concept has been uh, initiated many years ago and uh, the essence of inherently safer design is to avoid or remove hazards uh, rather than uh, add on various protective equipment to control them. So when we have the uh, alternate chemical rules, uh, we need to analyze them and assess them to select one. So for this, we need methodologies. So in my lecture today, I will present some methodologies that we have developed uh, that we can use during preliminary design stage uh, to analyze the alternate process rules and select one uh, based on inherent environmental health and safety aspects. So initially, we considered environmental impacts, uh, 
we develop methodologies uh, to select based on environmental impact. So if you consider the environmental impacts from chemical process installations or plants, uh, there are various ways in which it can happen. So uh, one uh, scenario is to consider the worst possible unplanned environmental impact. That is to consider the total loss of uh, chemical containment or uh, release of entire chemical inventory in the plant uh, as one of release. And also we can consider uh, various releases uh, during operation of the uh, plant, day-to-day -day operation of the plant. So this will involve various uh, uh, accidental release within the plant as well as uh, various uh, from uh, equipment, small, small leaks that occur within the plant. So we refer to those as fugitive emissions. So impacts from all those uh, emissions uh, can be considered in this assessment. So uh, in the initial development, we considered a catastrophic accident where the total loss of inventory occurs. And uh, we considered the airborne pollutants and uh, the atmospheric impacts, at atmospheric environmental impacts. So we considered uh, uh, five impacts, toxicity impact, photochemical smog impact, acid deposition impact, global warming impact, and uh, ozone depletion impact. So here the toxicity impact is the uh, impact on biological organisms because of the toxic properties in the chemicals. Uh, photochemical smog impact is observed in the atmospheric environment when volatile organic compounds are present and uh, nitrogen oxides are present. When the sunlight is, sunlight is also present, these uh, substances react and various other substances are formed. So these uh, various uh, substances uh, create a smog which we refer to as photochemical smog. In acid deposition uh, environmental impact, various acidic uh, gases that uh, are polluting the atmosphere uh, can again uh, undergo various reactions and produce acidic substances. And uh, eventually, with precipitation, it can these acidic substances can reach uh, soil and uh, acidified soil and also aquatic environment. So the, the ways in which uh, the acid falls off the sky, uh, wet or dry deposition. Uh, so global warming is another important global scale impact. Uh, the increase in temperature on Earth. So ozone depletion is also observed uh, global scale uh, in the stratospheric uh, ozone layer depletion of the ozone layer in the stratosphere. So we considered all these uh, impacts in this assessment uh, to quantify the magnitude of the impact, uh, various methodologies were used. And integrating these uh, impact magnitudes, we defined uh, an, a quantitative index uh, called atmospheric hazard index. So we apply this in a case study of methyl methacrylate. So methyl methacrylate is a chemical used in manufacturing a transparent material, widely used in many applications uh, in place of glass. Uh, so uh, when we, uh, so this index was used to relatively rank six alternate routes to manufacture methyl methacrylate. So the, this uh, table shows the ranking, uh, the in hazard increases in this direction. So here the acetone cyanohydrin based route shows the highest hazard uh, among other possible routes to produce methyl methacrylate. So this uh, index also can be used to identify various uh, 
uh, inventory, chemical inventories within the plant which has uh, high hazard on environment. So we separated the inventory into reaction inventory, separation inventory and storage inventory and analyzed the environmental hazard involved. So in all the uh, routes we observed that the storage inventory is having a high hazard, it involves a high hazard compared to separation and reaction inventory. So uh, in that uh, assessment methodology, we considered only the atmospheric environmental impact. We uh, extended that uh, this uh, assessment methodology and uh, incorporated terrestrial and aquatic impacts as well. So the common, uh, the mostly observed environmental impact, toxicity impact was considered in this case. Uh, here also we consider the total loss of containment and uh, in the evaluative environment, the impacts in the atmospheric environment, terrestrial environment and also in the aquatic environment. So the, here also we define the quantitative method uh, to relatively rank the alternate fruits called inherent environmental toxicity hazard. So in this case also when we applied the uh, methodology in a case of methane methacrylate, the same route had showed this uh, in acetocyanohydrin route showed the highest hazard uh, on the environment. So uh, the in these methodologies we looked at the total loss of containment. So the, in the daily operational activities also, uh, we emit uh, various emissions occur. So next we we'll, uh, looked at those and the fugitive emissions are the emissions, uh, unanticipated emissions that we observe in uh, chemical plants. Uh, from in, in chemical plants, there are lots of equipment. There are closed equipment, open equipment, there are lots of joints, uh, sampling ports. From these uh, places, uh, emissions occur depending on the volatility uh, properties of the substance uh, chemicals used. So uh, these emissions we refer to as fugitive emissions. We analyzed uh, whether there is uh, impact on the people living outside the plant environment because of these uh, fugitive emissions. So the, the, we considered in this case uh, two configurations of uh, vessel, mixing vessels where uh, in the paint industry uh, where a lot of uh, volatile substances are used. So the predicted environmental concentration that we observed in the environment uh, was very low. So when comparing with the permissible exposure limit values uh, related to uh, people living outside the plant, it showed the very low value. However, these uh, fugitive emissions are very important when we consider the occupational health uh, hazards because people living inside the plant, the concentrations are not as low as this. So next we looked at uh, the occupational hazards as well uh, apart from environmental impacts. So we further developed the methodology considering health aspects as well as uh, safety aspects along with uh, environmental impacts. So when we consider occupational health, uh, the, we consider the impacts on people working in the uh, inside the plant. So, uh, in chemical plants, chemicals are involved, and the uh, chemicals, the inherent uh, hazard in chemical is a toxicity hazard. So, uh, for occupational health, we use the parameter. Uh, 
toxicity parameters. So uh, for long-term exposure, exposures, uh, uh, chronic toxicity data, and uh, for one-off releases or short-term exposures, uh, acute data. And also, the safety is also an important factor that we considered. Uh, we considered chemical uh, safety as well as process safety. So to represent these uh, factors, we uh, considered uh, parameters such as the chemical inventory, uh, flammable properties, explosive properties, and for process conditions, temperatures, pressures, uh, yield. So uh, and various other parameters. So incorporating all that, we developed another method. Uh, again, considering daily plant operational releases. Here we consider, when we consider daily plant operational releases, we consider the, uh, the process within the plant the process uh, that we carry out because of the process various emissions occur. So these are actually uh, intentional emissions. So these are usually emitted through stack. So uh, not like uh, the fugitive emissions. So in this case, we consider the fugitive emissions as well, which are unanticipated emissions. So daily plant operational releases, uh, through the stack as well as uh, fugitive emissions. So the three aspects were considered, safety, health, and environmental aspects. So to represent safety, health, and environmental aspects, uh, three uh, sub-indices were defined called environmental toxicity hazard index, occupational health hazard index, and chemical root safety index. So these uh, indices were combined, integrated, and uh, an integrated inherent chemical process root index was uh, developed. So for the in integration, uh, a weight method uh, was used, and the weights were developed by getting uh, experts' opinion. So this method uh, was applied in a case of uh, four possible routes to produce the chemical acetone. Acetone is also a chemical widely used in our country. So this, this figure shows the, the four routes and the individuals, the sub indices and also the uh, integrated index value for each route. So some uh, Roots show the, uh, the environmental hazards. I mean, some roots have uh, high environmental hazards, whereas some roots show uh, high hazards related to safety aspects. So the after integration, also we have uh, uh, the index value is also shown here. So. Uh, after considering this, uh, we considered uh, the environmental impacts or impacts uh, uh, for daily plant operational releases in this case and uh, in previous cases that I discussed, uh, ca catastrophic release or one-off release of the uh, old inventory. So uh, in the next development, we combine uh, the two uh, considering all types of uh, uh, impacts from all types of releases. So when we say one-off release and, and daily operational releases, uh, here uh, we considered uh, environmental impacts as well as health and safety impacts. So in the uh, for environmental impacts uh, from one-off releases, we considered uh, the toxicity impact, global warming, stratospheric ozone depletion, and uh, the uh, photochemical smog and acid deposition impacts. And also uh, for 
daily operational releases uh, using the global warming impact. For daily operational releases, uh, here we not only consider the uh, fugitive emissions, we also consider the uh, accidental releases or spillages within the plant as well, impacts due to those as well. So, uh, in this method, uh, in this assessment method, uh, we used 13 parameters to represent these environmental health and safety aspects. So, to combine them and uh, rank the routes, uh, uh, we used the fuzzy based, uh, fuzzy logic based approach. The, in this approach, the, the uncertainties involved in uh, the, this uh, expert opinion method can be, uh, it is believed that we can overcome those uh, uncertainties or limitations. So we use the fuzzy logic based approach here. So the methodology is called EHS fuzzy index method. So based on these index, uh, we applied again in the same uh, case study, six routes to manufacture methane methacrylate. In this case, the propylene based route showed the highest hazard. Uh, here also, uh, acetone cyanohydrin route has a high hazard as well. So, when we know this, when we have this information, we can avoid selecting such routes when we are developing the plant. So, uh, these hazards are avoided or eliminated uh, in our plant. So this figure here shows the hazard potential and the membership that is used in the output membership when we apply the fuzzy logic based uh, approach in this assessment method. So uh, having uh, selected the route, uh, whatever the remaining hazards we can control by applying various uh, various uh, protective measures or safety barriers. So uh, in this, these uh, methodologies, we consider the impact, uh, environmental impact or occupational health impact and safety. Uh, we consider the magnitude of this impact. Uh, and uh, however, we we need to consider the occurrence frequency of the accidents as well. So uh, in this next uh, development, we considered both aspects, the environmental impact magnitude, as well as the frequency of occurrence of the accident or the release. So together, these two together, we have the environmental risk. So the methodology that we are developing here. Now, this is an ongoing research work. The chemical process assess, uh, root assessment methodology uh, based on environmental risks. So here we consider uh, hazards related to fire, explosion, and also toxic hazard. So the here we consider uh, environmental impact magnitude and also the vulnerability of the environmental elements. Uh, together with frequency of occurrence of the accidental release. So here we are considering environmental risk. So this work, uh, I'm planning to continue uh, uh, the environmental risk considered here, we can consider as dynamic uh, environmental risk in the uh, chemical process root assessment. So as a future work, uh, we are planning to develop assessment methods based on dynamic environmental risk as well. So in all these methods, we, uh, when we try to quantify the environmental impact, we had to uh, determine the fate of the release chemicals in the environment. So we had to define a model environment or an evaluative environment. So initially we considered a, a simple environment, model environment called unit world proposed by Neely and Mackey in literature. 
So this uh, unique world environment uh, contains six compartments, air, soil, water, biota, suspended sediments and bottom sediment. So this uh, model environment has one square kilometer cross-sectional area and uh, six kilometer atmospheric height. Height. So the multimedia transfer of uh, chemicals from various compartments were considered in arriving at the environmental concentration of the chemical. So depending on the case, uh, we developed, uh, we defined our model environment, uh, in, including uh, the multimedia transfer as well as intermedia transfer, such as diffusion, rain dissolution, wet and dry deposition and uh, other intermedia transfer processes, including uh, all those intermedia transfer processes. Um, so, uh, in, in a catastrophic release scenario where the total loss of containment occurred, uh, most of the time the chemicals distribute or disperse uh, in the environment and the concentration changes with time and the evaluative, evaluative environment also changes with the time. So this, uh, uh, this aspect was also included in our assessment uh, methodology. So uh, multimedia mass distribution or mass transfer between uh, in the environment along with dispersion in the atmosphere was considered. And the earlier defined atmospheric hazard index uh, was uh, again uh, developed further. So in this case, we consider the short term impacts because uh, uh, the, the, only the, for such scenarios, such evaluative environment, the uh, applicable uh, impacts are short term impacts such as toxicity, photochemical smog, and acid deposition. So when we apply this methodology in the same case, methyl methacrylate, the highest hazard was shown in ethylene via propion aldehyde based route. And also acetone cyanhydrin based route also showed high hazard uh, based on short term impacts in the environment. So these uh, methodologies looked at uh, assessing chemical process routes. Uh, after selecting the process route, we get uh, the chemicals are fixed uh, for that uh, plant and uh, the, whatever the remaining hazards we need to control by adding protective measures. So we developed another uh, method, the uh, risk acceptance criteria and uh, methodology to uh, assess uh, such uh, safety barriers or safety measures that we incorporate uh, to see whether it is acceptable, the risk is acceptable or not. So this is an outcome of a silver carried out by Mr. Vedita de Silva. So here this uh, figure shows the, after applying the uh, barriers, the uh, risk has come to an acceptable level. So we analyzed the uh, process industry accident data as well. Uh, uh, accident, accidents happen in 10 years uh, data. So the accident, the consequences of these accidents, most of the consequences were observed within the plant. Uh, as fatalities, human injuries, material losses. Uh, apart from that, we observed some uh, accidents damaging the ecosystem as well and also disrupting community as well. So this uh, figure shows uh, the accidents related to various activities. Uh, so you can see the processing activity, uh, most of the accidents have happened uh, while processing. And also we considered the uh, 
accident uh, events classification method uh, available in literature. So in this classification, the accidents are classified as a catastrophic accident, a severe accident, uh, as a, an incident, and uh, as a normal operation. So the, the accidents that we analyze, majority of the accident, accidents fell under normal operation. So we did not show any catastrophic uh, uh, name accidents of catastrophic nature. So, uh, but severe, there were two severe accident type uh, classification falling under severe accident classification. So this analysis shows that uh, we need to have in our country uh, chemical accident prevention uh, strategies. So in, uh, in a, the Central Environmental Authority along with the Task force, they developed a, a roadmap uh, for chemical accident prevention and preparedness uh, a program for Sri Lanka, and I was also able to contribute to that effort. Uh, this uh, process uh, route selection, uh, we applied uh, in our undergraduate education as a learning exercise. So we incorporated this uh, in our undergraduate education uh, in the module on safety and loss prevention. So we considered a cycle-based uh, method based on called experiential cycling, so experiential learning cycle. Uh, so in this activity, we did we we did the uh, theory in a lecture. Uh, how to uh, assess or uh, find the magnitude or uh, assess the consequences of a chemical release. And then uh, the students had to uh, assess their chemical process routes, alternatives uh, to produce a certain chemical in a reactor and select the uh, least uh, the one, one uh, route to further develop the reactor. So, uh, these, whatever they, the, their findings were presented uh, in, to their peers as well as the instructor and they got, they got feedback from their peers and instructor. And with that uh, feedback, they improved their design. So the, in this table on this side, uh, the mapping of calls, uh, experiential learning uh, modes are shown, the concrete experience, abstract conceptualization, reflective observation and active experimentation. So this cycle was repeated twice, uh, one for the assessment of uh, uh, chemical process route and after selecting the route, students had to uh, uh, introduce safety barriers to their reactor and uh, see whether the risk involved is tolerable or not. So, uh, so uh, we got feedback from students uh, related to this activity and uh, majority of them uh, responded that they learned the, uh, these safety strategies through this activity and also they achieved their learning outcomes through this activity. So this uh, similar activity was introduced to uh, learn inherent safety principles or inherent safety design principles, inherent safety and uh, passive, active and procedural safety uh, through practice. So we incorporated this uh, activity into laboratory experiments that they carry out in the lab, uh, learning process safety strategies by practice. So this is a student-centered learning uh, approach. Uh, we gave them a problem-based learning uh, a problem uh, assignment. So this was incorporated in laboratory practices in batch reactor, plug flow reactor, and also in multiple effect evaporator. So in this uh, uh, activity, also students responded their perception on the uh, learning out achievement of the learning outcome and the activity, uh, the majority thought uh, the perception was uh, good. They, uh, they learned 
the safety strategies through this activity. So uh, the process alternative assessment. Process alternative assessment was also carried out uh, in a case of uh, parboiled rice production process. Three alternatives, uh, hot soaking, steaming, mechanical drying, hot soaking, steaming, and sun drying, cold so soaking, steaming, and sun drying of uh, paddy. So we used the life cycle assessment approach in this case. Uh, to compare these three uh, alternate uh, processing uh, methods. So the impact categories that we uh, looked at were depletion of abiotic resources, climate change, human toxicity, photooxidant uh, formation, acidification, and eutrophication. So this is an area that I'm planning to uh, do further work uh, in the future, considering uh, uh, this, this climate change is an important impact and uh, we need to develop uh, more methods uh, uh, to assess, assess uh, processes. Uh, so we need to develop various methodologies to assess based on climate change impact as well. So as I mentioned earlier, the, the root selection method development uh, uh, based on environmental risk can be further uh, developed uh, considering dynamic environmental risk uh, and also the the three aspects that we considered inherent environmental health and safety aspects uh, needs to be further developed incorporating other criteria as well so these are some uh, my future works related to Clinical process growth assessment methodology development. Thank you, Professor Manisha Gunasekaran. As an undergraduate from the Chemical and Process Engineering Department myself, I feel rather privileged to be present here and uh, listening to a lecture about uh, assessment method methodology development and all the insightful details about the chemical plant development. And I would, I would like to invite um, Professor Shantai Kodagi uh, to present a memento uh, prepared by us for the uh, 16 denominator lecture, lecturer, our Professor Manisha Munsey. Thank you, Professor Shantai Kodagi. And now I would like to uh, thank you our sponsors, uh, our event sponsor, Cargill's Private Limited, and our printed media sponsor, Daily FT, and our social media sponsor, Sri Lanka Scientist. Thank you for your uh, continued support and cooperation. And with that, we have concluded the 16th inaugural lecture of this lecture series. Thank you for all the distinguished guests and all the attendees.